We're still on this breaking news out of Russia. That is the Crocus Hall, the music hall that is currently on fire. Russian media, the TASS organization, is reporting that the roof of this is partially collapsing as we speak. What we know is that it appears three gunmen, Russians are calling them terrorists, entered this concert hall, shooting on their way in and inside the hall, killing multiple people. At least 40 people are dead, 100 are injured. That number is likely to go up. It is a massive emergency scene around this concert hall, as you can see by the sheer number of uh, blinking lights out there, a number of ambulances. The Russians have said that their number one task right now is to make sure that they get more survivors. Uh, joining the conversation is founding partner and Washington correspondent at Puck News, Julia Ioffe, um, also one of our uh, favorite Russia guests, knows a lot about the country. Julia, the, um, the spokesperson for Ukraine's military and intelligence agency called the shooting a deliberate provocation of the Putin regime, which the international community has warned about. What do you make of that coming from the Ukrainians? Well, there's a lot of blame going around right now when we know the least about who is behind this. Uh, Dmitry Medvedev, who you remember used to be the president of Russia, he was a kind of liberal darling who led Russia through the reset under President Obama, has just come out and said that, you know, if Ukraine is behind this, then they deserve a massive retaliation. He said a death for a death. Uh, people are pointing fingers all over the place, but we don't know a lot. We've also seen the Ukrainian government come out and say that they have nothing to do with this. Um, the White House has echoed this and said they haven't seen any evidence suggesting that uh, the government in Kiev has any connection to this attack. But uh, Maria Zakharova, who is the spokeswoman for the Russian foreign ministry, has shot back and said, you don't know anything. It could be the Ukrainians. And I also see a lot of um, friends and people uh, I follow on social media in Russian talking about how this might be, in fact, a provocation by the Russian security services. Ambassador McFall mentioned that the 1999 terrorist attacks on residential buildings in Moscow where hundreds of people were killed in their sleep when the, these residential buildings exploded in the middle of the night, that that was how Putin came to power. And it has been a longstanding theory that Putin and the FSB were actually behind those attacks, and that he used them to crack down and, and seize power. Uh, a lot of people didn't believe that theory, of course, until Putin didn't go into Ukraine two years ago. So, of course, a lot of people are now deeply suspicious, people who don't approve of the uh, Putin government or what he's doing are now deeply suspicious and think that this might be yet another, um, whether the Russian government is behind this or not, that this might be used as a pretext to close the borders, call up a massive mobilization of the country, which uh, Putin has been loath to do at this point, and to crack down on any remaining freedoms. Yeah, again, we don't know who's behind this, um, and that I appreciate the, uh, the insight into what people are speculating about. Um, I wonder, though, when you're talking about how the Russian government might use this, uh, this tragedy to their advantage, do you, I mean, when we've seen incidents in the past that have happened within Russia, um, Vladimir Putin has, has gone harder on Ukraine, used it to strike harder on Ukraine. Might that happen, Julia? <laughs> That absolutely might happen, which is why I mentioned what Dmitry Medvedev, who uh, is a kind of id for the hawks in, in Russia, why I mentioned what he said. Um, but in general, as Ambassador McFaul mentioned, every time that there has been a terrorist attack in Russia, and there have been many, many, many of them, uh, the response has not been an enlightened one, shall we say. And mm -hmm. often it's accompanied mm -hmm. not just by counterterrorism operations, uh, which we've seen a lot of in the predominantly Muslim Northern Caucasus region of Russia, but a crackdown in the rest of Russia against whatever civil liberties or election rights or democratic rights remain to Russian citizens. Wh whoever is behind these attacks, uh, the Kremlin tends to use them to, to crack down and tighten the screws, not to elucidate them. Peter, was that your experience when you were reporting from there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's you know, and, and as Julia just said, I mean, the problem with Russia is that so many things that may sound far-fetched or outrageous or conspiratorial are either true or at least sound plausible enough 
that it, it, it does raise the question of whether we'll ever know, right? There will be people who will blame the Russian government for this, and they will never be convinced otherwise. There will be people who blame Ukraine for this and will never be convinced otherwise. They'll blame Chechens. They may blame the United States because the United States had that warning uh, issued by the embassy a few days ago. And it's, you know, an open question whether there will ever come enough information that will convince many people. Yulia mentioned the apartment bombings, as did Ambassador McFall from 1999. Essentially, we've been doing a lot of reporting lately, my wife Susan Glasser and I, on a new project. And one of the things we found is how many people who doubted at the time that those apartment bombings were actually the work of the government, it seems so uh, outrageous to think uh, so, have changed their minds today, that they have become more open to that idea. So it is a, it is a, a culture and a society where suspicion uh, is plentiful and hard facts are hard to find. Um, what about the timing of this, Peter? This comes only a, a few days after the election. It does, yes, and therefore, you know, people may make a connection that obviously he won the election such as, such as it was, an election that wasn't really an election. He doesn't need this in order to, to, to boost his political standing at this point. But, you know, could it be used as a predicate for some sort of an action, a crackdown at home, as Julia says, or uh, an increased escalation in Ukraine? Of course. Uh, and that's, you know, we're in the early stages of this right now. We're just you know, we're staring at these horrific images and thinking about the poor people who lost their lives and been injured there. But there is a political subtext to this. Uh, and, the, and the question is whether or not this will lead to something much worse. Um, Michael, uh, let me ask about uh, sentiment within Russia. Obviously, we saw the election. Uh, Vladimir Putin won overwhelmingly. Um, does this sort of thing help him or does it hurt him? I know he might use it to crack down, as Julia and Peter and you have been saying. But does it, does it show more vulnerability in the Russian psyche? What, what does it do? Well, just as we don't know, and we may never know who did this attack, we actually do not know if Vladimir Putin won overwhelmingly. I just want to underscore yeah. how hard it is to know anything factually out of Russia today, uh, because they don't want us to know facts, and they chase our journalists out. But secondly, uh, there's going to there's already in my feed. Just I'm, I bet you, we, Yulia and Peter and I have similar feeds. Uh, there's two kinds of reactions: one, outrage, and we need to deal with these terrorists and, and kill them and go on the offensive. Uh, two, there are lots of Russians already blaming Ukraine without any facts. But three, uh, there are others saying, "Why are we so vulnerable?" Uh, you know, these are more liberal-minded people, but why are we wasting all our time fighting a war in Ukraine uh, if security threats are really here? You mentioned before the break all these crazy ideas about who's a terrorist, right? Uh, chasing around those people, why aren't they chasing the real terrorists? Uh, that is a sentiment you see, uh, at least on my uh, social media channels, coming out of Russia today. So, so yes, publicly, of course, the, the news controlled by Putin will all be about, this is horrible and we are going to, to, to find revenge. But there's this subtext going on, you know, maybe we're not taking care of our own uh, while chasing around, you know, alleged LGBT activists who are also on the terrorist list.